they just bamboozled themselves. Russians increased their offensive against the second Bakhmut, Avdivka, but ended up trapping themselves. And to say the least, 1810 soldiers sacrificed themselves for nothing. And to make things even worse, Ukrainians destroyed the major retreat bridge. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point. And today, once again, let me give you an extremely quick one minute update about Israel Hamas conflict. And first of all, according to the Ministry of Defense of Israel, they canceled all the rules of doing a war. That is why Israel soldiers can do pretty much anything, they will not be prosecuted. At the same time, Americans also sent its elite Delta forces and also Navy SEALs to rescue American hostages from sector Gaza. And in response to that, Hamas representatives mentioned that in case America joins this war, Hamas will destroy American bases. They did not specify exactly how they're going to do it, but they did announce a major mobilization. And this Friday they want to do a total jihad against Jewish people. So just in case, be careful. And by the way, guys, I want to thank every single one of you who voted whether I should do this extremely quick Israel-Hamas update or just focus solely on Russian-Ukrainian war. And looks like that the majority of you prefer this extremely quick updates in one, two minutes, while me still focusing primarily on Russian-Ukrainian war. And long story short, as soon as something major happens in the Middle East, I will try my best to summarize everything in approximately one minute, and then yes, primarily I'll be focusing on our Russian-Ukrainian war topic. And if you like this format, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any of these updates. You can also follow me on Instagram to see how I live outside of YouTube. We're getting extremely close to 8500, so the link is down below. And so yes, now let's get back to Russian-Ukrainian updates. And first of all, let me tell you about Russia, who is pledging its money to restore Ukraine. Then we'll go to the south of the country, where the Russian Black Sea fleet is once again attacked, and then we'll finalize everything in the east, where Russians failed its offensive in Avdivka, and now are risking being trapped. And what I mean by Russia helping to restore Ukraine is that Belgium will transfer 1.7 billion dollars worth of Russian frozen assets to Ukraine to help restore this country. So now Russians are directly involved in dealing with their own consequences. Belgium is the very first country which adopted this policy, but I'm sure there will be many more countries to come. Then we have the United States of America, which is pledging 200 million dollars more in military support to Ukraine, which will be focusing more on HIMARS missile and additional ammunition. And as of right now, the total support of US to Ukraine is equal to 43.9 billion dollars. Besides that, America is also pledging 600 switchblade drones, which can be flying autonomously for more than 40 minutes with the range of 90 kilometers. And ultimately, the US will also create the coalition for Ukrainians to increase their air defense forces and also train Ukrainian pilots and Western fighter jets, and they will be supported by Denmark and the Netherlands. And speaking once again about Belgium, this country is also now wants to pledge F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine somewhere in 2025. And Denmark is already expected to deliver its first batch of F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine in spring of next year. Finland is also providing 95 million euros support to Ukraine along with Norway's support worth of 17 million euros. The United Kingdom is also providing brand new air defense system called Terra Hawk Paladin, and in addition to their own military support package, they're also pledging additional demining equipment. But nevertheless, Ukraine do not only rely on the Western support, such as for example right here as you can see, 5000 more drones bought under donations by Ukrainians were sent to the front lines. And even though a lot of people assume that the Ukrainian counteroffensive will slow down during uh, the winter, according to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the US, Charles Brown, they do believe that Ukrainians will continue their counteroffensive at least at the current pace. 
But okay, now let me give you a brief update from the south of Ukraine, where the Russian Black Sea and Navy was once again attacked. And then we'll go to the east of the country. And first of all, according to the locals of Crimean Peninsula, they were able to hear some uh, very loud noises coming from the Black Sea. And later, the Ukrainian Navy confirmed that the Russian, most likely patrol ship called Pavera Dirzhamin, it caught one of its own mines. It is not yet certain how extensive the damages are, but because Russian Ministry of Defense refuses to comment on this situation, we might assume that something actually bad happened to this ship. In addition to that, along the southern front lines, Ukrainians were able to destroy another major heavy flamethrower of Russians called Sonsepyok. And the destruction is truly incredible. Also, allegedly along the southern front lines, Ukrainians using GML Air as missiles were able to destroy a very big concentration of Russian military equipment worth of millions of dollars. In addition to that, Ukrainians were able to destroy a relatively big assault group of Russians along with their military vehicles to the south of Lapkove. And just overall, according to the general staff of Ukraine, Ukrainians were able to get a confident foothold next to Rabotine, and now this specific front line is mostly under Ukrainian control. And well, what is the response by Russians? Something unfortunately what they are very proficient in doing. A local school in Dnipro has been destroyed as a result of a Russian attack, and unfortunately there are civilian casualties. But just overall, in the last 24 hours, Ukrainians were able to intercept 28 out of 33 Russian Shahid drones. And so yes, now as promised, let me give you an extremely brief update from the East, before talking about a complete failure of Russians in Avdiivka. And first of all, as we stop in uh, Belgorod, local residents once again were able to report most likely a Ukrainian drone being intercepted and setting a lot of infrastructure on the ground on fire. Next, we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians and Ukrainians continue their combat activities along Kupiansk, Klatovy, Krimina front line, and Russians allegedly even advanced in some areas, which is not yet confirmed by this map. But on the other hand, Ukrainians continue their counteroffensive against Bakhmut, and they become more and more successful recently. And Russians, in order to stop the counteroffensive of Ukrainians in Bakhmut, they started using this white phosphorus, which is technically banned by the Geneva Convention. But it did not stop Ukrainians at all, because as you can see in this southern areas next to Klishivka and Andrivka, Ukrainians were able to liberate a pretty significant territory. But without a doubt, the most significant event in the East in the last 24 hours, or even I would say in 48 hours, is that Russians started actively pushing against Avdiivka. And so, for example, as you can see from this video, Russians started bringing even more of their own military vehicles to this sector. And just for another day, to be more specific, for the third day straight, Russians continue to push against this settlement. And this time, according to the general staff of Ukraine, it involved at least 2,000 Russian soldiers and no more than 50 military vehicles. And just like with any other city that Russians wanted to liberate from bad Ukrainians, the city right now is pretty much in complete ruins. And also a lot of people assume that the reason why they're attacking there with absolutely no success so far is to distract Ukrainians from their success in Robotine. But nevertheless, according to the representative of Ukrainian military Vitaly Barabash, this offensive of Russians, even though it does not yield any results yet, this has been the most significant offensive of Russians against Avdiivka since the beginning of the invasion. And as of right now, according to Ukrainians fighting in this area, they were already able to destroy at least 15 Russian tanks and 30 armored vehicles, which is pretty much almost every single military vehicle that Russians brought to this city. Which brings me to at least one very interesting assumption, is that Russians were so blinded by these orders from their military officers and generals to go and advance against Avdivka, they did, did not even notice themselves being trapped by Ukrainians. Because Ukrainians allowed them to advance along the narrow road where only one military vehicle can pass at a time. And this is exactly where Ukrainians ambushed this military convoy, inflicting significant damages, eliminating force, and also destroying those tanks and armored personnel carriers. 
And just once again to emphasize this same fact is that according to the general staff of Ukraine, every single attack of Russians has been successfully repelled by Ukrainians. They also mentioned that at least the entire three battalion worth of Russian infantry has been destroyed as well. But nevertheless, according to Russians, they were able to achieve some kind of success. Specifically, they were able to capture this small hill located to the north of Avdiivka. And if we do refer to this map, which shows the change in territorial control, it kinda looks like that, yes, Russians at a cost of 2000 souls were able to capture just a very little bit territory to the north of Avdiivka. And according to these updated statistics, also presented to us by the general staff of Ukraine, on October 11th, just in one day, a total of 820 Russian soldiers were eliminated. The next day, October 12th, this number increased to 990, bringing the total number to 1810 Russian soldiers, sacrificing themselves for practically minimal gains, with pretty much for nothing. And I mean, just imagine what was going through the heads of these Russian Z warriors whenever their commanders sent them on this um, mission just to distract the attention of Ukrainians from Robotinia. Pretty much, literally, they were sacrificed. But wait, there is more. Ukrainians actually made it worth by destroying a strategically crucial bridge between Horlivka and Snavutia which Russians also used in their offensive whenever they were getting closer to Avdiivka. And this is also exactly the same bridge, which just in case they will be using whenever they're retreating. And destroy Ukrainians destroyed it, so basically eliminating all the chances of Russians to retreat effectively, including with their heavy machinery. Yes, they will be able to retreat by foot, but just once again they will have to abandon a lot of military vehicles. So pretty much, to say the least yet, another absolutely meaningless decision by the Russian military commandment with absolutely, as expected, no results and no progress for the Russian army. Nothing, some things never change, right? I'll be closely following the situation in Avdiivka in my next episodes, and if you don't want to miss them, just please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support, and see you tomorrow.